The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Erin Holscher. I'm a business development coordinator here at ASTA. I'll be the organizer for today's presentation, learn about United's exciting new 2023 summer destinations and bold sustainability efforts. One lucky advisor attending live today will win a pair of Y-Class system-wide tickets. You must be on the presentation from beginning to end to win, and we will announce the winner live after the Q&A session. Before we get started, I'd like to point out just a few important features on your screen that will allow you to interact with us. We will be answering your questions at the end of the presentation. However, I encourage you to please feel free to submit your questions throughout. To ask a question, you will use the GoToWebinar pane. Near the bottom of this pane is an area that says Questions. If you click on the arrow next to where it says Questions, it will open up a window pane. This is what you will use to submit your questions. If you are having trouble hearing the presentation, please make sure your speakers are turned on. And if you called in, try hanging up and dialing back in again. You can send me any technical issues via that questions pane, and I will try my best to answer them. Please also note that all audience members are muted. We certainly wanna hear from you, but we have so many people on the call that the background noise would be prohibitive. And we wanna ensure that everyone can listen to the entire presentation. Finally, please remember that this webinar is being recorded and available for on-demand viewing at asta.org in just a few short days. Please join me in welcoming today's presenters, Sandra Kaspar, Shannon Hales, and Nashir Hirji. Sandra, take it away. Thank you so much, Ari, and thanks for having us. It's great to partner with ASTA. I wanna welcome you, Travel Advisors. It's great to have you joining us today. We're going through some very exciting times at United Airlines. We have been expanding our network, meaning you have more destinations to sell. Shannon Hales, manager of network planning and the network planning team have been extremely, extremely busy and have some exciting bucket list destinations added to what United already offers. And also today, as we continue our path for a more sustainable future, uh, Nashir Kirji, the director of global accounts, my partner, will be sharing all you need to know about United Initiatives. Thanks for joining us, Nash. We appreciate you partnering with us here. We know your customers and our collective customers want to fly an airline that thinks long-term. And among many things you learn, uh, I want to point out that you see why SAF, which is sustainable aviation fuel, is a better solution than carbon offsets. Nash will talk about that. But before we get started, uh, just as Erin has mentioned, we will raffle two coach class tickets, international tickets, to any destination with United Airlines. So I hope, look at that, this is a beautiful Malaga here in the background. That could be one of the destinations that you go to, given that we're gonna be flying there next summer. Um, and with that, thank you so much, Travel Advisors, for the great work. And now passing the mic to you, Shannon. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Sandra, and hi, everyone. I'm Shannon, as Sandra mentioned, I'm on the Atlantic planning team, and I'm very happy to be here today to tell all of you about our exciting new routes across the Atlantic. So this Atlantic growth story for United really began a few years ago. Back in 2020, rather than retiring any aircraft, United was reimagining where we could fly with our existing fleet. This led to some strategic new flights in 2021, we expanded our presence in MEIA, including new flights to Lagos and Accra, and we added new European destinations to Dulles, Athens, Chicago, Reykjavik, and Newark, Dubrovnik, as these countries reopened to American visitors. Then this past summer, we really scaled up our Atlantic growth. We increased flights across the Atlantic by more than 20% versus 2019, and we added 10 brand new Atlantic routes to our network, including several new destinations like Amman, Jordan, and Punta Delgada, Portugal. So with all of this growth, United has become the largest carrier from the US across the Atlantic, and United now offers service to more unique Atlantic destinations than all other US carriers combined. All right, so this upcoming summer, we are excited to continue our Atlantic growth story with eight new European flights launching between March and June of next year. These eight new flights include two second frequencies from LA to London and from DC to Paris, 
And we are adding these second frequencies to London and Paris to broaden our schedule and give customers new time of day options. So our new LA London flight adds earlier departures out of LA that will get you to London in time for a 7 a.m. arrival. And then our new DC Paris flight adds a later departure from Paris for customers who would like some extra time in the city before catching their flight out. Then the remaining six additional flights are brand new nonstop services, which are spread out across four of our US hub cities, which you can see laid out here. From our hub at Dulles in Washington, DC, we will add new nonstop service to Berlin, Germany. From Chicago O'Hare, we're launching two new flights to Shannon, Ireland, and to Barcelona, Spain. From San Francisco, we'll be adding nonstop service to Rome, Italy. And finally, from Newark, we are excited to bring back our historic service to Stockholm, Sweden, and to launch brand new service to Malaga, Spain. Okay, so first up, Berlin. Our new service from DC to Berlin will launch on May 25th next year and will operate daily for the summer season on the 767-400. Um, for a schedule rundown, this flight will leave DC at 6 p.m. and arrive the following morning at 8 a.m. with return flights leaving Berlin at 11 a.m. and arriving back in DC at 2.30 in the afternoon. We are really excited to be launching this flight as our second nonstop service to Berlin. With services operating from both Newark and DC, United will offer more flights from the US to Berlin than any other airline. We will also be the only carrier to operate nonstop service on this specific route, creating a brand new link between the US and German capital cities. And then with our strong connectivity at our Dulles hub, this route will offer one stop connections to Berlin from over 60 destinations including popular connections to Miami, Atlanta, and Chicago. Okay, then moving on to our Chicago ad, our new nonstop service from Chicago to Barcelona will launch on May 25th and operate daily for the summer season on the 787-8 Dreamliner. The new Chicago service will be a good complement to our existing flights to Barcelona from Newark and from Dulles providing a new nonstop option for our Chicago local customers, and also building one-stop connections to over 80 destinations, including San Francisco, LA, Denver, and Houston. The schedule for the Chicago flights will broaden our time of day coverage for any of these connecting passengers. So this 9.30 p.m. departure from Chicago will be our latest U.S. departure to Barcelona for those of us who like to travel after the workday. Um, and then the returning flight also provides a later departure out of Barcelona for customers who would like to enjoy one final morning in Spain before heading home. Our second Chicago ad is new nonstop service to Shannon, Ireland, which will launch on May 25th and operate daily for the summer season on our 757 aircraft. United is the only U.S. carrier to offer direct flights to Shannon with existing summer service from Newark. The new Chicago flight will again provide a nonstop option for our Chicago local customers, but um, will also significantly increase U.S. connectivity to Shannon over our hub at O'Hare, with 80 one-stop itineraries, including popular connections to SF, Dallas, and St. Louis. Um, then as a fun fact, with our two new Chicago flights, United will serve 14 unique European destinations nonstop from Chicago, which is more than any other airline. Okay, moving over to the West Coast, we will be launching new nonstop service from San Francisco to Rome, Italy, with summer seasonal flights operating daily on our 777 aircraft. With this new service to Rome, United will fly to eight destinations nonstop from San Francisco. And also, this will bring us up to a total of five daily flights to Rome next summer, with two daily flights from Newark and one daily flight each from Chicago and DC. Rome is currently the most visited European destination from San Francisco without existing nonstop service. So we're very excited to be providing this more convenient option to our San Francisco local customers. And next, on to our Newark services. 
We are excited to be returning to Stockholm next summer with daily flights operating on our 757 aircraft beginning on May 27th. Um, this is a route that we flew prior to the pandemic and we're looking forward to bringing back the service as we have seen a recovery in demand from the US to Stockholm this past summer. We will have one-stop connections on this flight to over 50 cities, including connections to San Francisco, DC, and Denver. And finally, we are adding one brand new European destination to our route map next year with new nonstop service from Newark to Malaga, Spain. This flight will operate three times weekly beginning on May 31st next year with eastbound services departing Newark at 10.30 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, arriving in Tamalica at 10 a.m. the following day. Then the return flights will operate on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, leaving Malaga at noon and arriving back in Newark at 2.30 in the afternoon. So we are very excited to be adding Malaga to our network as our fifth destination in Spain. We actually began expanding service to new Spanish destinations this past summer with new nonstop flights to Tenerife and to Palma de Mallorca. Um, both of these routes were very popular with our customers this past summer, so we are looking forward to adding new content in Spain for 2023. Um, all right, and that is it for the new routes. So I will hand it over to Nash to share the latest on United Sustainability Initiatives. All right. Um, good morning uh, from Los Angeles. My name is Nashir Kirji. Uh, most people call me Nash. Let me start by simply saying thank you. Thank you for your business and thank you for your support. We are very grateful for the trust you put into United Airlines. But thanks also for the opportunity. You know, United um, has the best products. It has the best network. But we also have a responsibility to the environment and to future generations. And that's why United Airlines is passionate about a more sustainable aviation future. I like starting with facts. And so on the next slide, you can see a couple of facts that I'll share with you as you um, consider airlines and as you consider routes uh, for your uh, customers. Number one, SAF or sustainable aviation fuel is used on every single flight departing from Amsterdam or Los Angeles LAX. Every single flight is powered in part by sustainable aviation fuel. And I'll tell you a little bit more about why that's important, but just a, a fact for you. The second picture you can see on your screen is that last December, in fact, December 1st, United Airlines was the first airline to ever operate a flight completely using sustainable aviation fuel. And in that picture, in a teeny tiny uh, image, you can see a lot of people waving. We had government officials, we had Boeing, we had a lot of other uh, industry leaders on that flight as we flew from Chicago to Washington Dulles Airport. We are also the only airline that will not use carbon offsets to solve and achieve 100% green. We'll talk a little bit more about why. And finally, many of you have been on airplanes. Many of you have seen the flight attendants come down the aisle and ask you for trash. On United, we take great pride in recycling on every single flight. So you will see our flight attendants come down with a bag for trash and a bag for recycling. They will separate your plastic cup, your tin cans, and your newspapers, other recyclables into an EcoSkies bag and the remaining items will go into the trash. In 2019, which is the last full year of normalcy that we had, United Airlines recycled over eight and a half million pounds of onboard trash. And that is just a small example of our commitment to a more sustainable aviation future. So when you're next on an airplane and they ask you to separate your recyclables and your trash, we certainly appreciate your support there. A few more facts on the next slide, but perhaps climbing a little bit um, more uh, into the general area versus specific to United. The airline industry today is estimated to be responsible for about 2% of the world's carbon emissions. All the greenhouse gases that are emitted in the world, the airline industry is responsible for about 2% of it. 
But as other industries reduce their carbon footprint, there is an expectation that if we do nothing to solve our emissions into the atmosphere, our share of the total carbon footprint could climb to 20% in 20 years. We cannot let that happen. We have a responsibility to help combat climate change. For us, the most uh, logical solution is sustainable aviation fuel. Sustainable aviation fuel is made out of household garbage. It's made out of fats, oils, and greases. If you've ever eaten a French fry, uh, a lot of that oil is recycled and eventually becomes sustainable aviation fuel, believe it or not. But there's just not a lot of sustainable aviation fuel available. In 2021, which was a banner year for producing SAF, the entire global industry produced about 30 million, with an M, 30 million gallons. However, again, looking at 2019, the last normal year uh, in the airline industry, the industry overall used 100 billion with a B gallons. So 30 million of SAF, 100 billion of jet fuel used. We have a long way to go. By 2030, thanks to a lot of government incentives, particularly here in the United States, the global airline industry is expected to produce 3 billion gallons. But again, consider the 100 billion, it's still a drop in the bucket. And here's another challenge. SAF is really, really expensive. Right now, SAF is estimated to cost between $1 and $5 more than regular jet fuel. So United Airlines in 2019 used over 4 billion gallons of jet fuel. If you assume that that price is $5 per gallon more, that's almost $20 billion in extra cost. We need to work to get that price down and we need to work on that together. On the next slide, you can see a little bit about why we're focused on SAF. 98% of United Airlines carbon emissions come from the burning of our jet fuel. Those are called scope one emissions, direct emissions that are put into the atmosphere by our daily corporate use, 98%. If we can get those emissions down, we will immediately go a long way towards resolving the amount of carbon we're putting into the atmosphere. But many of your customers, if you're looking for corporate uh, customers, they indirectly assume a scope three emission by flying on aircraft that are emitting scope one carbons into the air. And so these become scope three emissions and we account for that with our corporate customers. We say that you flew X amount on United and this is how much carbon was related to your corporate footprint. So not only do we use SAF to reduce our emissions, but we can help our corporate customers reduce their emissions from business travel. I know this sounds a little complicated. I hope I'll keep it as simple as possible. Take away this, 98% of carbon from United Airlines comes from burning our jet fuel. If we can reduce the amount of carbon in that jet fuel, we immediately help improve our carbon footprint and head towards 100% green. Now, the next slide shows that the airline industry is a little unique. We compared emissions from different companies just to see where they are versus United. And you can see Boeing, you can see Hilton, Hertz, some very popular and very um, well-known name brands. And you can see that blue is where their carbon emissions are coming from fuel. When you look at United, over 98% of our carbon emissions come from fuel. So for us, in many ways, it's a simple answer. We just have to use better quality fuel with lower carbon in that fuel. So I keep talking about sustainable aviation fuel. What about carbon offsets? The next slide um, will show you a difference between what a carbon offset is and what sustainable aviation fuel is. And you will hear people talk about carbon offsets. Are they a solution? Yeah, they're helpful. But the, to United Airlines, the time has passed to just offset the problem. We have to solve this problem. And I'll give you an example of why we don't believe that carbon offsets are the solution. A lot of times people will pay for a carbon offset, they're fairly cheap, and you know, we'll plant a tree and they'll assume that tree will absorb the oxygen that comes from their jet, uh, 
from the jet fuel used for their corporate travel or any travel. Here's a funny fact. A mature tree takes 55 years, 55 years to remove the carbon emitted from one round trip flight between New York and London in economy. It takes 55 years for a mature tree to remove the carbon emitted from one round trip flight between New York and London in economy class. Another interesting fact is if you planted on every piece of arable land, a tree, a mature tree, to take out the carbon that's being emitted right now into the atmosphere, it would only take out five months worth of carbon. And by the way, we would starve to death because we would have just planted over every farm out there. Carbon offsets are helpful, but they are not the solution. As I talked about earlier, the solution is to reduce the amount of jet fuel we're emitting into, uh, it's not jet fuel, excuse me, carbon that we are emitting into the atmosphere from the burning of jet fuel. By doing this, we reduce carbon at the source. We don't offset the problem, we solve the problem. And so SAF is going to be United Airlines short term solution to get to 100% green. And the next slide illustrates a little bit about why we're committed to this. I'm sure many of you have heard about sustainability. It sounds like every sentence now has a subject, a verb, and the word sustainability in it. But this is not a fad or something new for United. We've been a leader for a very long time in the sustainability uh, effort. We had our first flight at USAF back in 2009. We've been using SAF in flights from Los Angeles since 2016. Again, we talked about our first flight ever with 100% SAF in 2021. And we now have two of the largest SAF purchase agreements for the next 20 years going forward coming to United Airlines. In fact, the next slide shows that United Airlines has almost 50% of the SAF on order. And it's not cheap. We still have that cost premium that we have to deal with, but we are committed to finding a solution to reducing the amount of carbon we put into the atmosphere. We're not alone here. We're not competing on sustainability. Other airlines are doing really good work as well, but we like to take pride in the fact that we've been doing this for a long time and we have got the most experience, the most investment, and really the greatest commitment to getting to 100% green without using carbon offsets. In fact, we are the only airline to not use carbon offsets to achieve 100% green. And I'm proud to say on behalf of uh, nearly 100,000 employees on the next slide, We've been recognized by Air Transport World three times since they started giving out their Eco Airline of the Year. Three times. Um, that is more than any other airline. And it's something that we're proud of. It's something that we want to you know, shout from the top of buildings because this is really important to who we are as an airline. But it's also something that we hope everybody will get on board with. Again, we're not competing for sustainability when other airlines are successful as well we all win, and so does Mother Earth. The next slide talks a little bit about, or talks a little bit about other options. So I've talked about SAF, SAF, SAF. People always ask me, hey, Nash, why SAF? What else can you do? Why not use a battery? Let's have battery-powered airplanes. Well, today's current technology for batteries are not quite there yet to be able to power long-haul flying. You can do battery operated short haul flying. And in fact, you can see on the right side, in 2026, we will be introducing the Hart Aerospace ES-100 aircraft that does fly short haul, 250 miles on a battery. But you cannot do San Francisco, Tokyo. You cannot do um, you know, Dulles to Cape Town uh, on a battery powered aircraft today, unfortunately. What about solar energy? There's a lot of sun out there. Well, solar energy at this point is still too weak and it's too unreliable. I was in Vancouver yesterday and I promise you there was no solar anywhere in the sky. It was pouring rain when I left Vancouver yesterday. It would be very hard to generate enough of a charge to be able to power a long haul flight. We're really excited about hydrogen technology. In fact, we've invested in a company called Avia that's gonna replace regional jets with hydrogen power but the infrastructure is not quite ready. You've got to install hydrogen fueling stations at airports and other opportunities. 
um, which is coming, it's just not there yet. SAF is available today. SAF is easy to use. SAF can use the exact same pipelines that the that fuel comes into airports with, and it can use these same fueling infrastructure. And SAF is already approved. It has the approvals to be used in jet aircraft from the FAA. Best of all, there is no impact from using SAF in our engines, in our pipes on the aircraft. There is absolutely no issue at all. You could drop in SAF or you can drop in jet fuel. And we've tested this out. There's no difference to how engines work, how fuel is burned. We just do it better, smarter, and greener. So the next slide talks about 85%. I've mentioned that 85% of our of carbon reductions can be eliminated on a life cycle basis by using sustainable aviation fuel. But we announced we're going to be 100% green. So 85% does not equal 100%. What are we going to do to get to 100% green without the use of carbon offsets? Well, I'm excited to introduce to you uh, something called carbon capture or carbon sequestration. The next slide shows a really cool plant that is being built right now in West Texas. And this is called Direct Air Capture. And United has partnered with and invested in a company called 1.5. And what they do is they build these facilities in um, favorable places around the world. Again, West Texas is the first plant that actually suck carbon out of the atmosphere and either store it in the ground or they recycle that carbon in manufacturing processes that require carbon. So you're not adding any carbon, you're in fact reducing the amount of carbon. West Texas has the Permian Basin, which is ideal for storing carbon, which can be safely stowed, stored for millions of years. And this one plant alone will remove 1 million metric tons of carbon from the atmosphere. So you assume 85% reduction from the use of SAF, and you see other investments such as carbon sequestration or carbon capture will help us get to 100% green without the use of carbon offsets. And again, that single plant, that 1 million metric tons is equal to 40 million trees being planted. And it's just simply not enough space on this earth to keep planting millions and millions of trees right now. So South is our current plan, but what's ahead in the future? Well, you are all amazing travel advisors. The next, um, the next couple of options here uh, show you the opportunity to find ways to work together on more common goals. Look at that slide. Imagine if your booking tools had information, accurate information about what the carbon footprint was and whether or not, whether or not your flight was sustainably powered. We want to empower and educate your travelers so that they know what, what they're buying and you know what you are supporting them as you build and support their travel. Number two, we want to advocate for more supportive policies. The Inflation Reduction Act had a large component dedicated to sustainable aviation fuel, including incentives. I think 20 years from now, we'll look back on that act and that um, law now and define that as the moment sustainable aviation fuel became mass produced and was the starting point towards a more sustainable aviation future. And we've got to find new technologies. We have to find ways to move away from jet fuel and into other aircraft types. And when we buy a plane today, and United has over 500 planes on order, those planes stay around for 20 to 25 years and they use jet fuel. So we have to find better jet fuel, also known as SAF, but we also have to find other ways to partner to bring on aircraft that may not need jet fuel. And this wild looking aircraft is called an EVTOL or EVTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. And this plane is going to um, operate in markets such as Beverly Hills to LAX Airport. You, any of you who live in Los Angeles, you know that traffic can be sometimes challenging uh, in the LA area. So this is gonna help get cars off the road and it's electric powered as well. So the next slide talks a little bit about um, sort of new technologies and what are other ways to reduce carbon. Every aircraft 
those 500 planes that United Airlines is bringing on board, every single aircraft is at least 15 to 20 percent more fuel efficient compared to the plane they're retiring. And that is our minimum hurdle, is it has to be 15 percent more fuel efficient and thus carbon efficient than the plane that's retiring. If you've ever been on an aircraft and you've looked out the window and seen a winglet, those winglets can save up to 6% of fuel burn just by improving aero, aerodynamicity. That's a hard word. Um, it can reduce fuel by up to 6%. And for better neighbors, it actually reduces noise um, as well from those winglets. We're working with the FAA to improve air traffic control technology. If we can find more efficient ways to fly, we can we estimate we can reduce fuel consumption by 15%, the entire industry by 15%, just by moving to satellite-based technology. And the FAA reauthorization bill comes up next year. And we're working with our government uh, to support um, modernizing our air traffic control. And United Airlines has a goal. You see that airplane, you see that tug that's pulling the aircraft there. We want to replace all of our under the wing aircraft, under the wing technology with electric technology. So we're not burning fuel, we're using electricity to support um, a lot of the under the wing activities. So we believe these are ways that we can reduce um, the impact from carbon, from, carbon uh, from travel as well. So the next slide just talks again about the emission, SAF emissions reductions are just the start. You saw that four step journey. One of the things that's really important to us, um, if you don't mind clicking the second button, please. Um, one of the things that's really important to us is again, educating you so you can educate your travelers. And we want to make a reality the displays you see on the left side where we talk about sustainable powered flights. We give you accurate carbon emissions. Again, if every flight out of LAX is powered in part by sustainable aviation fuel, then you should see that carbon number be different for United, lower than other airlines, because we are the only airline that's doing it. And we're also empowering our travelers and our corporate customers. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, with information, United Airlines was the first airline to publish a sustainability dashboard. So if your customers have a corporate deal with United and have Jetstream access, they will be able to go in and see their carbon footprint on United Airlines. And this is a really powerful piece of information just to make people aware of where they're generating carbon, what aircraft type, what routes, and how we can work together to help manage that um, carbon emission and carbon emission reduction strategy as well. Because most corporate customers have a sustainability goal, and our job is to support them in achieving that. We're really proud to have an org a group called the Eco Skies Alliance together. And we just had a summit two weeks ago in Chicago called the Eco Skies Alliance Summit, where we had over 40 customers and organizations come together to share ideas, to listen, to learn, and to collaborate on next steps towards achieving a more sustainable future. So if you know anybody that um, works for any of these companies or if you support any of these companies, please say thank you, because these companies are leaders in finding a more sustainable aviation solution. So the final slide is just a journey, which is what do we do next? If you would like more information about our journey towards a more sustainable aviation future, please reach out to your UA rep or just email us at eco-skies at united.com and together we'll advance low carbon solutions, we'll work together to advocate for better um, and more scalable solutions, but most importantly, we're not, we can't do this alone. We want to engage in partnerships, partnerships with you, partnerships with your organizations, and partnerships across the industry towards a more sustainable aviation future. This last slide is my favorite. Um, you know, we don't plan to land on the right side of history. We plan to land on the green side of history. And so I want to say on behalf of all of us at United, thank you. Thank you for your support of sustainability. Thank you for your support of a more sustainable aviation future. Lori, Sandra, Shannon, I will turn the floor back over to you and see if there's any questions out there. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Nash. This is Aaron with ASTA, and I just want to, again, echo your your gratitude for your partnership with United's partnership with ASTA and, and helping um, helping drive our mission forward here in the in the travel industry. So I do want to I do want to touch base a little bit about some of the the comments that we've had come through in our questions um, in our questions block. I believe all of our presenters did such an amazing job of, of presenting this information about the summer destinations and about these sustainability efforts. So we've, we've gotten some great feedback of thank you for the information, for the updates, for all of your, your passion and, and really leading the charge in these sustainability efforts. However, at, at this time, we do not have any current questions. So I'd just love to be able to, to present that as a, an option for, again, all of our, our travel advisor members on a refresher here to be able to go to that questions panel on the, the go-to webinar pane and to be able to type in those questions. So if there's any any burning elements that, that you'd like to ask our presenters, absolutely now is the time to do it. Um, but but alternatively, I think we, we got some great information here from our presenters and we can sure take those next steps um, into doing our, our, our prize winning drawing so we've got that very anticipated drawing for our winner. One lucky advisor attending live today will win a pair of Y-Class system-wide tickets. So if there aren't any questions, I will, I will advance right into that here for us. So drum roll, please. So the winner of our, of our tickets of those pair of Y-Class system-wide tickets provided by United is going to be Benjamin Jolly. So Benjamin, congratulations so much with that. I'll be sharing those details with our presenters and they'll be following up with you for your prize. Um, let's see here. And I just like to pass it back to our presenters, to, um, to our, our presenters, excuse me. Nash, Sandra, Shannon, anything to add? Anything to, to close out the webinar for us here? Uh, no, well, thank you first, uh, Benjamin. Congratulations. You are the, the lucky winner amongst many, and I'm sure you're going to have someone that would like to join you on the trip. Um, I want to thank for the opportunity for United to be here and talk about our new destinations. We're extremely excited about it. Those are more destinations for you to sell. Spain is a selling point that is fantastic for tour operators. And now we fly to several destinations there. I wanna re remind you of that. And I wanna thank Nash for talking about sustainability. I know in the list of, this is the list of corporations for the Echo Skies. We hope to have travel agency partners there soon too. Um, so thank you, thank you very much for being the call and Aaron for hosting us, appreciate that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again to you all. And, and we will be touching base and, and I'll have this again, this webinar recorded and up on asta.org in just a few days for to, to stay up to date on, on United's missions. So thank you so much. Have a great afternoon.